So we have looked now at how to expand uh, a binomial expression using the binomial theorem. And what we do with that is we have a sum of terms. We value all the coefficients, all the different powers, and that can be useful, but sometimes we only want to pay attention to one particular term in the whole expansion. It might be a particular term using the variables. It might be a, the constant term. It might be a term without uh, a variable in it. So what we want to do is to be able to zoom in on a particular term without having to write the whole expansion because that can get very cumbersome, particularly if it's the powers of the value of n is large. So we have this idea of a, a general term, formula, or rule. And if you have a look at it here, it actually just looks very similar to what we've been working with already. You'll notice that it's the same elements of the binomial theorem formula, except it just doesn't have a sigma summation sign, because the sigma means the sum of all these individual terms. So if we take away the sigma term, we're basically uh, left with the structure of an individual term. So we have n choose r, x to the power n minus r times y to the power r, and we, on the left-hand side, use this terminology here. It's a term, and the little subscript r plus 1 is just the position of that in the uh, expansion. The r plus 1 term, effectively. So in other words, in order to get the fourth term in the expansion, we would have to set r equals 3. So we're going to have a look at using this uh, general term, a particular term formula. So example 3 here says find the coefficient of x squared y cubed in the expansion of x plus y to the power 5. So the first thing we can do is just use the shape of what's written above. And we can say that t r plus 1, we don't know what r is yet, that's what we're going to have to try and think. So we can rewrite it. We know that n is 5, so we can write 5 choose r. And in our binomial expression here, we have x on the left, y on the right. So the first term is x, so we can write x to the power 5 minus r. The second term is positive y, so we can write multiplied by y to the power r. So we construct that just as we would uh, construct our, uh, our summation rule at the beginning of the full expansion. So what we want to do now is just uh, try and identify what value of r we need. So the information from this comes in the fact that we're asked to find a specific term, x squared y cubed. So you can tell by comparing the y powers here, the y cubed term has to match up with y to the r on this expression. So it's quite easy to tell in this one, we can say that for the x squared y cubed term, r must be 3. And that works for both of them. If you have a look at the x term, 5 minus 3 is 2, which is what we want from our x term as well. So by inspection, we can say that r is going to have to be 3. And if we substitute that all back in, it tells us that effectively the fourth term, because 3 plus 1 is 4, the fourth term is going to be 5 choose 3 times x to the power 2. Yep, and I'm just confirming that indeed r equals 3 does give me x squared y cubed, which means that if I want to do 5 choose 3, uh, that's got the value of 10, so that gives me 10x squared y cubed. So the fourth term in our expansion, without having to write it all out, is 10x squared y cubed. Just as a matter of um, interpretation here, the question says find the coefficient. So you would be expected uh, to actually make a conclusion to say that the coefficient of the x squared y cubed term is 
ticking, which shows that you're paying attention. Okay. We'll do the example uh, 3B on a separate video, uh, so you can check on that. That that one's quite straightforward, but most of the time we have to do a little bit of algebraic uh, rearranging uh, and simplification. So uh, have a go at the next one, just to get an idea of what you're going to need to do for that.